Ni hao. Ching gay wa. Say away. Dung yi chow. Wealth wa. Hey guys, Ken McClellan. Al Lewison. Uh, we're over in China today, guys. Um, Elle and I have been over here a few times um, in our development projects. We've got a number of high net worths that um, invest in our projects in China. What are you wearing today, Ken? I'm going to go to a few meetings and I'm going to put a suit on. So I'm going to be looking, be looking sharp. Um, saying that, guys, we're, we're over here. We want to give you a bit of a rundown what we're doing over here. Um, we've also got uh, Matt Lewison, who's the CEO of our funds management division. So I'm going to talk to Matt uh, a bit later and uh, the next video might be about what a syndication is, a property syndication. Um, but we thought we'd talk today about land content and why Australia is a really good place to invest, especially for overseas investors, and match that back with Al can talk to you about when he went um, over to the States and looked elsewhere to invest and what he matched up and how he found Australia. Yeah, we'll talk novelty properties, I guess, guys. And one thing, right, driving from the airport out to the hotel last night, we got in pretty late, but we just asked some questions about the property market here, what people think, and generally all the feedback was around how wealthy Chinese people consider Australians who have land content in their properties, uh, as opposed to, I don't know if you can see the background, it is very, very high density apartments well on top of the other. Yeah, we're in um, the city's name, if I pronounce it right, is Chongqing, which is the third largest uh, city in China. I think there's about 30 mil million people in this province over here. Um, it's actually a pretty clear day, guys. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's not fog out there. That's, uh, that's pollution. That's smoke. So I feel like I'm smoking a pack of cigarettes as I'm talking to you here now. Jimmy, you'd be happy, mate. Yeah, that's right. Passive smoke. So, um, when we've looked to invest overseas, we've matched a number of different things. We've matched um, overseas economy, so when I went over and we're looking to invest in the States, um, the US economy versus the Australian economy, the amount of supply versus the amount of supply and population growth in Australia. And while it was attractive to invest overseas, really, it was we were just looking at novelty properties. You know, and it was a great spin to go and think you could invest elsewhere. Why would you do that when Australia's got one of the world's best performing economies, a shortage of house land supply, uh, an increase in population growth like nowhere else, and our regulations over our banking industry is phenomenal. So that's why Australia is such an attractive place for China to invest. So anyone who's in any business of any sort that can maximise or capitalise on the money in China at this point in time, I encourage you to do so. I'm not sure if you've seen uh, James Packer ever, or the Packer Whacker as he's known now. <laughs> uh, James Packer is one of the biggest advocates of getting money out of China and into Australia. So anyone that's got any possibility in any business line or industry, take advantage because it's a fantastic, the Chinese love Australians for investing. Uh, just a couple of last things on, on novelty properties, guys. What we call novelty properties are things like properties in mining towns where mm. the property market is only spurred along by one industry that could leave town any time and take the rodeo with it. Yeah. Um, properties in small towns that might give a little bit of cash flow positive, but no growth ever. Um, if I talk about the United States, what are the risks? Well, for us, it was attractive. We did a lot of research. It was two trips for me over there, and I spent um, about two weeks both times exploring different towns, different markets, um, lots to learn, but fundamentally we came back to the fact we can't control the interest rates. Most of the towns in America are little towns that didn't meet the population requirements that we have here, which... Sort of like a Geelong or a Townsville, or, you know, that's, that's their massive, massive cities. That was amazing, guys, you know, of all these big cities, or what you think are big cities, but, but I got there and I was amazed at how little their populations were. You're talking Orlando, 300,000, you're talking, you know, little towns like that that make up the whole country and wouldn't have met the requirements that we have here for our portfolio. So, guys, what it's about, we've talked about it before, have a plan, have a strategy, have a structure, Ours is growth properties in towns with a million population minimum. Minimum lease. Um, that have got multiple industries, that have got employment drivers, that close to shopping centres, transportation, all those things, guys, to make and track your property for people. Australia's a good place to invest, guys. Have a good day. Talk soon. Yeah.